Hi everyone, it's Mel here um, from Women's Health and Wellbeing Services. Welcome to another live stream, the second one I'm doing this week. This one is on uh, talking to your kids about sex. So this is a talk for parents um, and tonight's or this evening's topic in particular is for parents of teenagers or tweens or your you're sort of nearly into that stage with your kids. So I wanted to um, go there really to open up a conversation about that. You're welcome to join uh, the chat, the, the live stream and um, ask me some questions along the way. Otherwise you can watch this back, of course. Um, so this is a really important um, subject, but often a really fraught um, for some parents anyway, fraught kind of area to go into with their kids, particularly their teenagers. And look, hopefully before you've um, reached the teenage years with your kids, the, um, you've already had a little bit of discussion or a lot of discussion along the way uh, with your children about sex and sexuality and their bodies and relationships, that kind of thing. The earlier you get in there and start these conversations, the better it is. So obviously when they're young children, you're not going to be having detailed conversations about puberty and sexual relationships and stuff like that. You would just start with the basics about body parts, um, you know, and eventually they're like, where did ba babies come from? And you kind of get in um, a bit more detail as they get older, obviously, depending on their age and stage. Uh, and if you've already set the scene in that in that regard um, and you uh, it kind of makes it a lot easier to then have more and more sort of heavier um, tricky conversations as they get a bit older so I want to start by saying a lot of parents really fear that when they talk to their kids about sex it means that they're going to go out and start having sex and the the research is very very clear on this that this is just not true it's very similar with fears around talking to your children about drugs or alcohol you know any of these kind of subjects that are that are really um intense and kind of scary for, for a lot of parents children and teenagers actually want to know they want to get good information and if you're not talking to them about it where else are they getting that information from? The school does cover in the curriculum um, some in you know um, each year group on certainly on um, puberty and sex starting in late primary school continuing on to, into high school and I'll be talking a little bit about that some of that content um, but really it starts and ends in the home with the family with the parents or the caregivers of those children and the, those teenagers so, and we know that online now there is oodles of opportunity and content and information and misinformation, porn, you know, lots of kind of stuff out there that, that children and teenagers can get their hands on and probably already have seen at some point. Hence, the earlier you get in there and start opening up conversations with your child or teenager about sex, about relationships, about bodies, the more they're able to come to you for questions. You know, instead of going online or instead of just always talking to their mates, there's nothing wrong with that. We've all done that. You know, there's a, you get some good information there, but you also get some really bad information from, from mates and friends. So don't worry that talking to your kids about about sex or about any of these subjects is going to start making them want to go out and do it it's not and did that happen to you if your parents had those conversations with you or somebody did did that make you want to <laughs> race out there and frantically start doing it probably not so on that note of your parents and your upbringing I really encourage you to have a little think what it was like for you as a child and as, as a teenager in regards to this subject. Did you get any information? If so, where did you get that information? Was it solely from school? Um, if it was at school, was it just the bare basics about this is what's going to happen to your body in a few years time? This is what pregnancy is. Don't get pregnant. This is what STIs are. STIs are sexually transmitted infections. Don't get them, you know, kind of thing. And this kind of fear-based um, learning around sex. Some of you may have had that. Some of you may have been fortunate enough to have some sort of um, positive role model, parent, a caregiver around you to help 
you navigate those years and have some of those conversations probably you didn't you know I think certainly for me when I was growing up I'm in my 40s I really don't recall any conversations. There might have been the odd one or two. I I honestly can't remember, which tells me that there probably wasn't many or any. Um, so I really want you to think to think about that, even though you might be feeling quite anxious and quite nervous about um, having a conversation with your child or children about um, about sex. What was it like for you, and what would you like to do different? Um, you being the parent, you can lead the way in this regard. You can talk about your values and what you want to instill in your, your children um, about values, what you value about relationships, what you value about intimacy, you know, what's important to you around um, sex and sexuality, you know, stereotypes, gender, the way women are p uh, portrayed and um you know, all those kinds of things. You actually have a lot of power in that regard as a parent. So I really encourage you to bite the bullet um, and begin some of these conversations. It's best to have these kind of conversations in small, regular doses. So we really don't advocate this kind of sit down, one off talk about the birds and the bees. And heads up, we do not, preferably, we do not use term euphemism euphemisms and terms um, that allude to sex or allude to body parts we use the correct anatomical terms for our bodies and the same goes for sex as well the reasons for that is that it can help discourage um, no sorry it can help prevent um, sexual abuse if something happens a child knows that this uh body part was touched and that was not supposed to be and they can tell that oh, oh somebody touched my vagina or something like that instead of going oh somebody touched my secret box oh that's okay honey it's just your little secret box thinking oh it's a jewelry box or something um when really they're actually trying to tell you that something very serious um happened there so the more we're able to normalize body parts and human behaviors which are normal there's nothing wrong with that um, the better it is the more educated our children are the more uh, the less likely they will be um, affected by uh, any potential abuse or trauma in that regard so that's that's really um, obviously really important um, and when we create an environment that we would say is sex positive it actually helps children sort of grow and form really healthy um, sexual identity and really healthy sexual and adult intimate relationships. So sex negativity, um, what that is on the flip side of that is when we are really, you know, ashamed of sex or it's a lot of taboo or we don't talk about it or we have some really rigid um, views about that. Um, and that tends to not bode well in terms of outcomes for those children or those families because you're going to go off and find that information elsewhere. You're probably going to do some behaviours perhaps under the influence that you might regret later on or your child might regret later on. So when we just encourage conversations and we normalise it and we're just positive about this is just part of being alive and being human and this is how you got here and this is what I would really love for you um, one day when you're older um, and you want to fall in love and you want to do this kind of thing. I mean, completely different way of approaching this subject. So I hope that's kind of slightly convincing you. Let's continue on. Step one, don't panic. Do not <laughs> panic. If you panic, that's okay. Just try and keep that inside. Be like a little duck swimming on the, on the in the river, looking all calm and smooth, and in the inside you're frantically going, I don't know what I'm doing here kind of thing. That's okay. Hey, none of us as parents really know what we're doing. We're all just doing our best. The more information you can get a hold of by like listening to um, this um, video, um, I'm going to provide you with some links to um, websites and some more information that you can get that the better you are informed and the better equipped you are to handle these conversations particularly if you've got children who are coming to you already you know teenagers who are already talking with you maybe not teenagers because they tend to not talk certainly boys I'm stereotyping there um, 
you know, and you really want to be honest with them. You really want to give them the best information that you can or say, oh, look, sweetie, I, I, I actually don't know the answer to that question. Let me let me go and find that information for you and let's sit down and have, uh, then I'll talk to you about that particular question. You know, that's a good one if you are feeling a bit uncomfortable and caught off guard. It's really important that you follow up with that. When you say to a child, hey, we're going to do this at this point, particularly around a tricky subject like sex or their body or something like that, that you follow that up and you go and have that conversation with them because that builds trust and that builds support and that teaches your child that you are there for them, that you are a source of support and of good information and isn't that what we all want for our kids? So, um, so yes, going back to just thinking about your upbringing and the way how you got your information about sex and relationships what then do you want your teenager to know that perhaps you didn't know Um, and think about you know it's kind of a really odd question and probably a bit confronting but have a think about what um, what kind of lover you know your you want your child or your teenager to be when they're an adult what kind of adult do you want them to be in a relationship you know weird thought I know but this is kind of where we're heading when we have children when we have babies and children like grow to children you know we are we are creating adults we're creating future adults um, we were all children and babies once and we're very much in some ways shaped by our upbringing in other ways not and of course that can be you can change that you can fix some things that didn't go too well in your childhood but um it kind of helps to keep that in mind. I think it makes it a little less scary when you kind of think, oh, yeah, the point of this is that I want them to be happy and healthy um, emotionally and physically when they're in relationships, when they're starting to date, when they're starting to have sex. You know, so keep that kind of goal in mind. Um, I want to share with you a really good resource that I um, am going to be talking a bit from. And... I really encourage you to get hold of it. So this is from the WA um, Health Department. It's a great booklet here called Talk, Talk Soon, Talk Often. Um, as you can see, it's a booklet. This is free. Okay, so you can hop on their website. I'll, towards the end of this um, live stream, I will go to their website. I'm going to try and do that. Go over to their website and you can sort of see um, where it is. But otherwise, you can Google Talk Soon, Talk Often. The website has oodles of information. You can order these um, booklets for free. You can download it for free as a PDF. They've got tip sheets. They've got so much information there. Um, And it aligns with the curriculum here in Western Australia with what the schools are teaching as well in regards to this. So let me give you 10 reasons here. I'm just going to move things around so I can read through the the book. So um, 10 reasons for... Uh, for talking to your children and your teenagers about sex and sexuality and sooner rather than later. So like I've already mentioned, first reason, most children want to know. Children, and certainly teenagers, are naturally curious. We, we're all like that. Hopefully you are still curious in your life. They want to know. And ideally, we want to be that port of call for them for that information. Like I mentioned before, the earlier you start these conversations, the better because it does set the stage for later conversations, certainly when they become adolescents and things get a bit more complex. Uh, Another good reason to be talking to your children about sex and relationships and sexuality is that it helps to the child or the teenager cope with puberty a lot better. And, And think about that. I don't know if anyone out there had an experience of not really knowing what was going to happen to their body and then suddenly things were growing or things were doing you know body parts were doing strange things um and how scary that is i think it's really mortifying when some changes happen to your body that are actually really normal um but you don't know what's going on or you don't know how to deal with it is this a problem is it's not is it not i'm really embarrassed you know um and if that would have happened to uh, a young person then they might go online to seek that information they may talk to their friends you know and they they may be lucky and get some really good information but they also may get some really awful information or stumble across um, websites that you would rather them not see so another good reason it helps them cope with puberty um 
Another good reason, research has shown that it um, certainly for boys, it ensures boys get included in, in sexuality education within the family. Uh, often boys tend to miss out on um, sex education occurring within the family. It tends to be um, the mothers who have these conversations, um, whereas we really need the dads to be very involved as well, particularly with um, boys, but just generally um, both parents, if both parents are around or um, both caregivers. Um, otherwise, boys in particular are left to, and they will find it, they will go online, they will look at content, they will most likely find pornography, um, talking to their mates, you know, getting all kinds of um, wrong information and wrong information in particular about girls. And we know that um, in relation to um, violence against girls and women, that um, distorted and negative um, attitudes towards women start really early. They, they start in childhood and what that child or what that boy is exposed to within the family and sort of within the wider media and culture. Um, and that grows really. And so the more um, you're able to have conversations with your sons and your daughters, involve dads as much as possible, the better. Another good reason to talk to your kids about sex and sexuality is that it shows shows your children that you have their back. And I just love this one. I think it is so important, not just for conversations about sex, but other conversations that are, that are difficult, like I mentioned about drugs and alcohol. If you're willing to have these conversations with them, to lay down your values, um, to talk about worst case scenarios, you know, um, and how you will support them if that happens. And it may not ever happen, you know, but your child needs to know that you've got their back. Um, even if they ring you at 2 a.m. and go, I know I'm only 15, but I'm really drunk and I've just had sex. I mean, you know, pretty crazy stuff. Of course that has happened um, in the world, you know, kind of thing. What we want ideally for, for a hypothetical situation like that is for, for that child to call you and for you to go, I'm going to tell me where you are, let, let me go get you, we'll talk about this tomorrow. Yes, you may have a lot of feelings that come up and a lot of thoughts, but if you are already having conversations around these issues and your child does get into a bit of a tricky situation, um, you'll be able to sort it out together and you'll be able to teach your child um, how to think about that? You know what what happened? What decisions were made for you when you went to that party, or you you got in bed with that person? You know, kind of thing. Um, because when we don't talk about things, or we really uh, have a very punitive approach, and we punish our children for you know pretty pretty normal kind of behaviours, really of being curious, of risk taking that's a very adolescent teenage brain thing to do. That's actually um, brain development happening there that we would expect and sort of predict in a way. Um, when, when, when they're not supported in some of the ridiculous decisions that we've made, let's face it, we've probably made some of them as well. That, you know, creates shame. It creates disconnection between that parent and that child. And then they won't come to you when things get really bad. And if, if things get really bad, I should say, um, worse than that. So we want we want us to be that place of support and for them to know that we have their back. Um, a really another really good and important reason to talk to your children about sex and relationships and sexuality is that it helps them make healthy choices. If you are having conversations about these subjects, um, they're going to know what's crap, what's not real. For example, you know, if, they, if they've come across porn and overwhelmingly, um, you know, by early teenagers, teenage years, most children and, and early teens would have come across some sort of sexualized images, whether that's full on pornography or advertising or, you know, random ads that pop up on websites and phones, iPads, you know, you name it. Um, when you are having regular conversations with your kids and particularly your teenagers, then, and they're getting that information also from school and, you know, it's all kind of out in the open. When it comes to making a choice about how they want to behave with another person that they're attracted to, they're going to be able to think, 
um, in a healthier way. You know, they're probably going to think, is this what I really want to do? They might well have some understanding about peer pressure um, and pressure in sexualized situations, what that means. Ideally, too, they would make better decisions around sexting and any any kind of online exchange of images or videos and uh, messaging, that kind of stuff. I'll go into a little bit about that later on. Um, hence, you know, we want to we want to be having those conversations. Another good reason, like I mentioned before, it helps protect protect children um, from sexual abuse. So the more children are aware of their bodies, of their privacy, of their boundaries, um, what consent is, what respect is, all these kinds of things, the less likely they are to um, get into situations which may be abusive or if they are, God forbid, they will be able to come to you and talk to talk to you about it and you will be able to do something so very much around um consent you know and that their body is their body and no one else can touch it you know um some protective behaviors conversations you could have there about um good secrets and bad secrets and who they can trust those kinds of conversations so again really good for sexual abuse um, prevention another really important reason to talk to your kids about this subject is that it can really help children who don't identify um, with their assigned um, sex at birth. So, you know, or if they identify as, or if they're questioning their sexuality. So, you know, if you have a child that is saying, um, there might be a boy, but they're saying, I feel like a girl, I want you to call me this name, I want to change the way I I dress and all this, um, you know, change their kind of identity in that way. Or if you have a child who's questioning their attraction and they find that they're same-sex attracted or they're just confused, if you are having conversations with your children about this, and obviously this is going to be dependent on your values and beliefs around um, sex and sexualities and gender identity, um, but the point is, the more we're able to have conversations with our kids about about the whole scope of sexuality, the more likely it is that for a child that doesn't identify as being heterosexual um, and and pretty mainstream, the easier it is for that child who doesn't fit that mold um, to have a conversation with you and to navigate that in their teenage years. You know, adolescence is difficult enough, let alone if you are questioning your sexual identity or your sexual orientation. Uh, Another good reason, ninth reason, is that these conversations, like I've mentioned before, help you to share your family values and what's really important to you. Um, hopefully you're already having some sort of conversations about values you know you might not explicitly be having those conversations we value this we value that maybe you are in that you have a list of your little family values somewhere I know some families do that Um, but you know having conversations with your children related to what you believe is right and wrong and what um, what you value is really important in, in instilling those values in them And finally, um, it shows kids that it's okay to talk. You know, like I said, you want to be that support. You want to teach your children that you have their back. Um, And if you're having these kind of really difficult conversations, you're saying, hey, it's okay to have these really difficult conversations. And I, I think that sets kids up really well for the future for when they're adults and they're going to be having difficult conversations with other adults about many, many other topics. You're actually teaching them skills in that regard, how to broach embarrassing conversa- embarrassing topics, tricky conversations, um, awkwardness, all these kinds of stuff. You know, if, if they've kind of had some practice with that and know that they can go there with you, that's going to hold them in good stead when they're adults. Um, so there you go there's a few really really good reasons and that's taken from that book or booklet talk soon talk often just wanted to start talking a bit about what the curriculum here in WA um, teaches so you you can go on to their website like I said I will go through some websites towards the end of this um, live stream so the website you want to um, look at in this regard is is GDH are uh, growing and developing healthy relationships so that's through let me just check it here department of health 
Um, and you can go on there, you can see what, what's in the curriculum, what, what supports are offered for teachers, some learning plans, you know, all these kinds of things. Just because you're a parent, it doesn't matter. You can go on there and have a look yourself. By all means, talk to your your child's school, your child's high school about what, what they are covering, who is covering it. You know, I think that can have a really big impact as well. The quality of the, um, not just the content of the sex education, but of the teacher who's delivering it and how comfortable they are or not with that maybe another conversation to be having with your child so in schools so in year seven so you know your child is probably around 12 12 ish what they would be talking about in the curriculum is content around periods for well, for girls and boys who need to know about that obviously um contraception some stuff there uh, going into more uh, puberty stuff which probably was covered in late um primary school talking about the not just the physical changes in puberty but the emotional changes in puberty online communication the hpv vaccination respectful relationships and if there's one thing i would like you to take away from today it's the importance of encouraging respectful relationships um, between boys and girls or between boys and boys or between girls and girls who cares it doesn't matter um, respectful relationships is at the heart of a good society and certainly a good family and like I mentioned before um, when we're thinking about violence towards women and children which is still a huge issue in Australia and throughout the world we know that that starts in childhood like I've mentioned before boys learn girls learn as well how they behave towards each other through what they're experiencing at home and what the outside society and culture is reinforcing there um, so the schools are already having these conversations really really important so then we in year eight they're usually covering a bit more stuff on um, puberty more stuff on the hpv uh, vaccination hpv um vaccination is the uh, it's a newish um, newish last few years um, vaccination for boys and girls to prevent um, the, the um, HPV um, sorry I've just lost for words right now but what that stands for uh, human I'm gonna say papilloma might be wrong virus that causes cervical cancer in girls and boys can be carriers of this as well and unknowingly infect their partner so this is um, part of a huge campaign to prevent um, cervical cancer for, for girls and women. So that's um, obviously you have to consent to your child being immunised, but that's part of the, the schedule these days. Um, also in year eight, they'll be covering conversations around pregnancy and birth, uh, what's okay, what's not okay in relationships, more on respectful, respectful relationships, and some topics around choices and consequences. Obviously not just about sex, there would be some drug and alcohol stuff there and some peer pressure stuff there. Year nine, they'll be covering some more stuff on respectful relationships. Like I said, that just that that just continues on. That's a major theme. Body image comes into conversations around this um, this age in year nine. Gender and diversity, um, sexting, online respectful relationships, um, and being ready versus not ready for sex. Come year 10, some more conversations around um, the influence of the media. Um, particularly I suppose around porn and sexting, um, sexual health and well-being, bloodborne viruses, condom use, safe sex, sex in the media, that kind of stuff which I've just mentioned I think, sexual risk, what that means, what that looks like, um, body image, I think I've mentioned that. Um, keeping safe in sexual situations. Anyway, you can go onto the website, like I said, and have a look. And I'm just mentioning that because, you know, often I certainly know from my son's school, I'm like, what are they teaching now? Like, I didn't even know they might have got me to sign a form a few, few years ago when he was a bit younger. And I'm like, wicked, they're doing some stuff. But it's like pulling, t it's like getting blood from a stone, honestly, from teenagers sometime about what are they teaching? And especially around a topic such as this uh but um so you know i'm just thinking you can align some of your conversations with what the school is teaching them um, and how they're kind of teaching them 
A really important thing, like I mentioned, with the respectful relationships and really keeping that theme going throughout um, childhood and adolescence and certainly adulthood is about um, what respect looks like in relationships, what what consent looks like in relationships, what does uh, mutual conversations look like between a boy and a girl or a boy and a boy or a girl and a girl, whatever the preference is, in regards to sexual activity you know so when I'm talking about oh how to have conversations with your kids about sex I'm talking about all this stuff I'm not just talking about sexual intercourse or pregnancy or safe sex kind of thing we we really what we really want to do is kind of wrap all these these topics in a bubble of respectful relationships consent communication we want to talk about pleasure as well not just about don't get pregnant and don't get an sti you know when we focus on pleasure um, that kind of draws in other questions and other topics around um, pornography and around sexting and around the way we treat women if we have a focus more on pleasure and both uh, people in that sexual interaction assuming there's only two at this point um, we are teaching children to have and teenagers conversations at some point with their partner does this feel good for you and isn't that what we all want in terms of thinking about what kind of adult do I want my child or teenager to be um, if they're able to think and have some conversations around this with their their, their partner brilliant you know and this is going to decrease um, incidents of you know coercion or force or assault or assumptions around how boys treat girls and how girls treat boys all these kinds of stuff so I really want you to keep that stuff in mind as you're having these conversations you don't just have to go through the bare bones of this is what happens <laughs> When, when a girl gets pregnant, when a woman gets pregnant, a girl or woman gets pregnant, this is what sex is, don't do it like this, you know, all this kinds of stuff. Um, on the note of, of porn, let's let's kind of go there. You're going to have to have, you're absolutely going to have to have these, this kind of conversation probably quite many times if you're kind of having a, a general, small conversations often, um, teachable moments we would say you know grab any kind of teachable moments so you might be watching a movie and there might be a sex scene or a few sex scenes or there might be an interaction between a man and a woman which you think oh I think you know that was violent or that was abusive or something um you know grab that grab that you don't have to pause the movie right then and there that might be really irritating but uh but you might you know or you might see an ad on tv or there might be a series you know there was that series um what was it called? Called The Hunting on SBS, three-part series about sexting in um, high school. Really encourage you to watch that and have a conversation with your teenager about that if they've already seen it or if they're willing to watch it with you. There are some actually guidelines online about how to have some conversations around sexting and around that TV series as well. So porn. Um, if you catch your child, your teenager, watching porn, again, don't panic you know we really I know that's incredibly hard particularly when it's not in alignment with what you value or what you believe in is right to consume but you need to just try to have a little breath there and go okay we're here this is actually happening you know when if and when that happens um, normalize it say you know um, normalize it and say look it's okay to be curious you know you know it's normal to kind of stumble across this content online whether they stumbled across it or not we want to just assume that okay they've they've stumbled across it maybe that'll open up a comp more of a conversation that oh they actually do watch it or they do consume it quite regularly you know obviously you would um go down a different path so don't don't panic um normalize the curiosity and they're seeing it it's okay to be curious and then you can start having some conversations. Obviously, I think this would depend on the age of your teenager. You know, a 13-year-old versus a 16-year-old, quite quite different. Um, we want to be talking about, I'm just looking at my notes here, um, what, 
what porn is teaching a child. So porn is not sex education, you know. <laughs> I know I'm kind of like coming down hard on that. Um, and the, the reason why they, they might have intentionally come, um, intentionally watching it or they stumbled across it and then they're like, oh, I'm just going to stumble across it again because they're curious and they want information. Hence the importance of talking to your child about this subject because then they're less likely to just find it online and then start consuming content that you really don't want them to consume. So when you're talking to your teenager about pornography, um, you want to talk to them about it not being real. You know, most porn, I know there is there is some porn out there that it, that is real and that's kind of a, a different stuff, but we're assuming they're finding just mainstream porn by paid actors kind of thing. So we want to talk to them about that. That is not real. It's just like when we go to the movies and we watch a movie, we know that, say, Jumanji is not a real movie and all the action and stuff like that and, you know, creatures aren't real. So we want to immediately get them thinking, okay, that's not how it is in real life. Because when you're not having conversations um, with your teenager about porn and what they're seeing online, they may well start assuming that that's actually how sex is. They may assume that that's how a man um, treats a woman. And uh, uh, women, women, they all seem to like kind of being slapped around or they all seem to like some pretty rough stuff. Oh, okay, I guess that's, you know, for girls consuming that, you know, if, if, if the teenager is watching that, and then girls might think, oh, Jesus, you know, I that's okay, I have to do that, you know, or okay, I always have to agree to stuff. You know, and really in porn there is there real depictions of real true pleasure and particularly female pleasure as well. It te- still tends to be focused on the man and, and, and his pleasure. Yes, it can look like she's enjoying it, but remember, particularly in mainstream porn, they are being paid and they are being paid to look like they're enjoying it. So that's some information you want to give your teenager as well. Teach your teenager, they may well be learning this at school too, sort of in English classes or media, teach them to be media literate and porn literate and critical about what they're consuming online you know i don't know what it's 90 percent of stuff is online now honestly you can just find so much information and it is so incredible and amazing and we are so lucky but also it comes with this really crappy dark side to it as well so we want to be in as parents in that space there to help them navigate the stuff that they're, they're going to come across. I hate to say it, but they will. If they're not finding it or stumbling across it, their friends probably are and their friends are probably showing it to them. You know, and that again, that's that's just that's just normal kind of teenage behaviour. We won't don't want to come down too hard because it's probably going to drive that behaviour underground and then they won't be having conversations with us. Um, so teach your children, your teen to... Be critical about what they're seeing. This is not realistic. This is not how it goes in real life. This is not how real bodies are. You know, have you seen some of the bodies in porn? It's just ridiculous. And sets up boys and girls for body image problems. You know, for for boys, oh, I've got to look like this. I've got to have the six pack and be muscly. I've got to perform like this. You know, it can set up a lot of pressure to um, perform sexually when... They're, not, they're very inexperienced, you know, often for boys, they want to appear, you know, a bit of bravado. Oh, I know what I'm doing. You know, I'm really experienced or I have lots of knowledge when really they're freaking out because everyone's freaking out at that age kind of thing. And for girls too, they can be like, what? I've got to be like a size six and I've got to have boobs out here and I, I've got to just accept whatever is done to me. Where is the conversation in porn that you see a man and a woman talk about what they love and what they want to do with each other? Probably not there. So we, you know, hence you want to be talking about some of this, some of these um, topics. Is there any conversations in porn around consent? You know, is do you actually see that? You know, talk talk to your team. You know, have you actually heard them con- consent to that? Do you see respect between that person and that person? Is it representing sex, sexuality, male pleasure, female pleasure accurately? Is it depicting all sexualities, all genders? 
probably not unless they're specifically going to look for that so what I mean what I'm talking about here is that we're sort of you want to be having a conversation that's kind of really pulling apart what what the content is what they're seeing and what messages they're getting from it and we want to give them a different message once they're over 18 you know of course they're adults they can go and do and consume and watch and take part in whatever whatever the hell they want and more power to you you know but if they have had um good conversations positive experiences around uh sex and relationships and porn and stuff like that you know it's going to help them make better choices as they grow and develop into um like i've said before adults themselves and what what they're going to choose to consume or to influence their sexuality and how they learn about that we don't want like i said we don't want porn to be the go-to sex education tool and it and it is becoming that way in this day and age um so yeah there's some ideas there <laughs> about some conversations to have with your teens around porn and what they may be um, finding online again remember you don't have to sit down and have this one big giant conversation um try to sort of yeah just kind of regularly have some little questions oh you know if any of your mates seen anything online you don't even have to directly ask them you can kind of go you know go, go to go in a roundabout way to get that in you know to get that information and you might find that they're like yeah yeah oh yeah um Sana's in class such and such is, is on the computer and I know they're watching some porn and you'd be like oh okay you know again you've got to just calm down <laughs> not panic and you go oh did you have a look at it what was it um you know you just you just try to be kind of casual as you can be in amongst a bit of panic and anxiety there and then start opening up some conversations and have some questions around you know what it was and again depictions of consent and respect and it's not real life and bodies blah, blah, blah. you know you don't want to talk too much i'm talking a hell of a lot right now you don't want to do you don't want to lecture um your team about any subject at all and you don't want to do this kind of information dump they will switch off like it's in 30 seconds kind of thing so hence you know small bits of information just keeping that conversation open and going well, what's happening now in their world kind of thing have you seen anything kind of weird online that you want to talk about um you know, and I think they're much more likely, even if they don't talk to you and they don't share much, the fact that you keep saying, I'm here for you, I'm here to have these conversations with you, they will remember that in the back of their mind. And if something really tricky happens or they see something really disturbing or upsetting online, hopefully you will be the one that they will come and talk to about that. And isn't that what you want? Um what else not really get no one's really asking any questions now is the opportunity to ask some questions if anyone is online and watching this um what else do you want to talk about with your your teen about sex sexting of course huge one and now we have some pretty firm laws in place to protect essentially it's about protecting teenagers from the harms of um, sexting sexting being the sharing of sexualized um, images videos or messages with or without consent again um, that series the hunting on SBS is a really good one to watch for that the thing with sexting of course is that under a certain age um, the sharing of information of, of sexual images body parts videos anything um, is illegal and we would say that children cannot consent to that and up until a certain age a person is still a child kind of thing we also want to protect um in terms of um sexting and breaking the law we also want to protect our teenagers from image-based abuse where somebody may have consensually taken a picture of themselves sent it to say it's a girl and you send it to a boy that you like or you have a crush on kind of thing and what they go and do is share it to their mates. Um, I'm making a big assumption here. Share it or share it online or something like that without your consent. Or they say, unless you do this for me, let's assume it's a sexual behavior, and unless you give me oral sex or that we have sex or something like that, or um, I'm going to share this image around. 
um, and everyone's going to know it's you. So we, of course, we absolutely do not want that to happen. So the more conversations, again, we can have around subjects such as sexting, um, you know, and again, you know, talking about how easy it is to sext, how tempting it may be to do that. There's actually some anecdotal evidence that teenagers might do a bit of that, almost like as a bit of foreplay. It's so normal this, this day and age to, you know, live online and converse online. Um, but we want to be very careful about what they're sharing of themselves and what they're receiving. If you receive an image, even if you didn't ask for it, you can still be, you can still be breaking the law for that. Actually, um, adults tend to sext more than teenagers, the research has shown. So just kind of keep that in mind and keep in mind too that your teenager is probably doing awesome, doing the best they can, is not out there going crazy, taking every drug under the sun, having wild sex, you know, sharing images, watching heaps of... No, just try not to go there in your head. That's worst case scenario catastrophizing kind of stuff that's just gonna just gonna freak you out you know um so try to i guess have faith in your teenager and i think the best of them always uh, you know and i genuinely think most kids or all kids are doing the best they can and really and do want to be doing the right thing nobody wants to be in trouble nobody wants to be doing the wrong thing you know if that's happening a lot there's probably some deeper issues um, going on there that you would want to explore or get some help for them so around the sexting stuff we certainly want to be helping teenagers just stay safe online again being really conscious and really literate of the media and what they're seeing and what they're consuming and what they're sharing you know that kind of stuff so we wanted to have this kind of critical eye really about the online world and what's out there particularly in relation to um, sex really and relationships and sexuality all that kind of stuff and like I've said before there's some tre tremendously good content but there's also some pretty terrible content out there as well so we really want to be mindful um, of that it's really um, particularly in this book you know when you if you get hold of it um, the talk soon talk often guide um, it's also there's some information there about typically children and particularly teenagers have some pretty false ideas and and false expectations about sex you know and again if they've consumed or they've seen some stuff online and they may think oh gosh I've got to do that you know what what even is that I didn't even know that was a thing um and it can kind of create yeah this this fear and anxiety um, around sex and around expectations of what to do in the bedroom um, and can kind of shut down conversations that your teenager might have with their partner when it comes to that time in their life where they you know want to go a bit further than kissing or maybe they're just they're just sort of at the kissing stage um, and they want to do they're really curious about something more but how do they have that conversation if you're having some conversations with them and helping them feel just a little less embarrassed and awkward about it you know again hopefully that would translate to a little bit more confidence in them for when they're in that situation and they're going to make some choices about what they want to do with another person or with themselves themselves and on that note I haven't really talked about uh, masturbation um obviously not obviously you know but like I said I, ideally when they're younger you would have started to have just some little conversations around around that around touching yourself normalizing that it's a very very normal um, behavior for boys and girls you know and as children we would teach them you know that's something that you do in private and again, this would be dependent on your values and what you believe is right and wrong in that regard. Um, but certainly as teenagers, we would really normalize that and being curious about your body and how healthy and important that is to explore and understand their body, to explore the anatomy and what feels good and what doesn't feel good. Again, if we have a bit of a focus on pleasure, then that translate into pleasurable, healthy experiences 
as older teens and adults with a partner um, versus not basically you know and particularly for boys if we're talking about um, erections if we're able to normalize them and wet dreams and stuff like that and there's, there's different types of erections and and that's really normal to have them and I know it can be really you know you might say oh I know it's really uh, well I don't personally know I'm a, I'm a girl but you know um, you could just you know talk to them anyway just about how tricky that might be or how to manage that or if dad can have a conversation with their son around that and it just kind of makes it okay you know it's difficult enough being a teenager it's really such a crazy time many many highs and many many lows so we just want to kind of make it kind of as smooth as possible if that's such a thing and we want to be I think it's Maggie Dent who says this you know we want to be that lighthouse for them when they're out there swimming in the wild ocean and exploring and going way out to hang out with their friends and try new things we still want to be that lighthouse back on shore going I got you you know you I'm still here for you when things go wrong if they go wrong I'm still here I'm still solid and grounded for you um I really hope I'm not dropping out. I've just kind of looked at the, the screen there and it looks like I've dropped out a bit. But anyway, I hope that it's going okay. I will re-record this if need be. Finally, before I finish up, um, like I said, I wanted to um, give you guys a bit of information about um, some good we um, resources and websites um, that you can go to and find some content online let me see if i can uh, figure this out so like i said there's the talk soon talk often um, resource that's available through the wa health department aha uh -huh. what i'm going to do is going to go over to my other computer no i'm not and sorry about this still learning all this kind of stuff uh, and you can request a copy of that and let me see if I can do it here do I'm just gonna look there is me so if we go up to here there we go so this is the talk soon talk often uh, website from Department of Health here um, Western Australia uh, lots of information here as a parent you will get thousands of questions, but ones about relationships and sexuality are often the most challenging to answer. So that's how it's starting out. We can see down here they have some tips or some um, information about the resource. Here is the resource here. If you were to click here, it's a PDF. Like I said, there's a little tip sheet. There's some ones here for Aboriginal families, yarning quiet ways, some research information you can access there and how to order copies of talk soon talk often there so that's a really good um, website the curriculum one i mentioned gdhr growing and developing healthy relationships again department of health western australia so this is for teachers and for schools um, um, about supporting schools to deliver comprehensive relationships and sexuality um, education so you can have a look through learning activities whatever you want you know and you can you know go and chat with your teenager about what they may be learning at school or talk with the t some of the teachers at school here we go this is where I pulled some of the information from you know year levels over here with um, sorry year levels here uh, topics that cover you know all this kind of stuff it's pretty cool so of course that's free for you to go and look at um, this is another good website um, about porn um, and kids and teens it's called it's time we talked.com Australian website uh, supporting young people in an era of explicit sexual imagery this is a really see parents is a good um, section here for parents young people schools community organizations we see here what I was just talking about pornography is now the most prominent sexuality educator for many people um, so we want to get in there as parents and certainly be having some conversations around that um, there's some statistics down there uh, really good website as well uh, parents up here that kind of thing um, also there is another website here cyber savvy so this is um, from telethon kids here in WA I assume um, <clears throat> some good stuff here 
communicating with your child, legal facts about sexting. It's got a lot of um, some legal information there about what what are the rules and what are not the rules. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, some really good points um, here, definitions of sexting. Yeah, <clears throat> some pretty tough legal stuff here. Jail sentences for child pornography is up to 15 years. Pretty scary stuff. Um, <clears throat> you know, and you don't, you don't want to freak out your your teen you don't want to scare them you know I think a lot of us the way we were um, educated in in a lot of this um, these subjects was pretty fear-based and don't do this and don't do that and this is going to happen and the monster's going to get you and you're going to get this horrible disease and blah, blah, blah. you know uh, I don't know I don't think that it doesn't work it really doesn't work so we want to just give factual information in a really calm sensible way and just sort of keep that conversation going so this is another good website here there are a couple of other ones, uh, Sex Positive Families, I haven't got that here, but that's an American site that has really good resources for um, parents and families about talking to kids about sex. Also Sex Ed Rescue, um, that is a Perth woman, Kath, uh, she does lots of stuff teaching parents um, about how to talk to their kids uh, about uh, sex and also where are we on this website back to the GDHR website um, they have a little thing one of these things that came up was sexual headquarters or SHQ so se um, sexual headquarters is in Northbridge oh there we go in Northbridge in Western Australia um, th this is that that is a great clinic for any anyone can go but um, it's very youth friendly so if any you know teenager might have some questions or some um, sexual health issues they can go there for free they can ring up so it might be just good sharing some of that information with your teen you know about um, what's out there should they need to get help and should they not want to talk to you and I guess on that note it is it is worthwhile having a conversation with them if they find it absolutely horrifying and mortifying to have conversations with you about these topics who else in their life can they go and talk to is there someone another adult that is safe and trustworthy that is a good role model um, for them um, you know and that's fine you want them to be talking to someone uh, whoops um, someone someone a real human that you know and that you trust is better than um, no one or online that's what I believe anyway okay so on that note I'm going to wrap up and I'm really hoping this did record <laughs> or it did live stream it looks a little glitchy it might be my um, internet at home I hope this has been uh, useful for you um, if you have any um, questions or any other information you would like please drop us a line here at Women's Health and Wellbeing Services you can do that via our Facebook page there or via our website um, I will be live streaming again on this topic in May can't quite remember the date around mid-May I think um, on talking to younger kids about um, sex so obviously today we've covered a bit of teenage um, content um, content for talking to teenagers uh, and my next live stream on this subject will be talking to um, talking to younger children about um, sex in their bodies and that kind of stuff so I hope you feel a little bit more confident in navigating this tr tricky subject do your best um, trust yourself get get the right information out there and start having those conversations with it with your team they will thank you one day i'm sure i hope you know kind of thing take care all the best see you later